welcome to Vote Center, bringing you the top stories from the wide world of local electoral politics. I'm Lefty Malone. And I'm Art Wright. It's been two years since a presidential election, which means now it's our favorite time of the ones every four years. Midterm elections. It's like the World Cup if Americans paid slightly more attention to it. Get registered. Now this year's primary draft is unlike any other. First up, the Senate. Six year terms. Amy Klobuchar is going for the hat trick after two terms in the Senate, but she's got a Democratic challenger, Leonard J. Richards, who's serving a life sentence for double murder. Mad Dog! If Klobuchar can crush Mad Dog in the primaries, she's a shoe in for the seat this November because honestly, we don't even know who the Republican challengers are. Not relevant! But seriously, she's the favorite in this matchup. She's the Steph Curry of parliamentary procedure. But you still need to vote. But that's not the only Senate race we have, because thanks to the upset Al Franken resignation, we have a... Double header. Fighting to hold on to her seat after being appointed by Mark Dayton is former Lieutenant Governor Tina Smith. But she's not getting to the general election without a fight, because she's facing off in the primaries against former Republican Richard Painter. He may have worked in the Bush White House, but this former elephant's hoping you'll forget as he looks to join the ranks of Team Blue to oppose Donald Trump. Switch up! The winner of this head-to-head -head will likely battle Minnesota State Senator Karen Housley this November. Did you know her husband was a pro hockey player? Uh, sorry, I actually don't really follow sports. Not a fan. Next up, the governor's race. Let's go to the bracket. After earning the GOP endorsement back in June, Hennepin County Commissioner Jeff Johnson looked like he could go all the way. But this failed 2014 gubernatorial candidate wasn't counting on a last minute entrance from failed presidential candidate and former governor Tim Pawlenty. Let's check out the stats on Teapaw. Coming in at eight years as governor, eight years lobbying for major finance corporations, and with $1.7 million in campaign contributions, this superstar is ready to bring his talents back to St. Paul. Now, some are worried that a knee injury, coupled with the fact that he left office last time with a $6.2 billion deficit, might hurt his chances. But after the Trump campaign Cinderella story, anything, anything can, can happen. happen! Please vote. On the left, we have an all-out brawl. First, we have Minnesota Representative Erin Murphy and her running mate, Representative Erin May Quaid. Two Erins, one ticket. In an upset, underdog Murphy snagged the DFL endorsement from U.S. Congressman Tim Waltz and running mate Peggy Flanagan. Let's look at the stats. Waltz is a six-term congressman from the 1st District, says he can appeal to moderate voters, and his campaign has raised over $680,000. ka -ching. But that's not all, because the DFL convention brought a new candidate onto the scene. Attorney General Lori Swanson. After failing to receive the DFL endorsement for Attorney General, this Swanson refused to sing her swan song and pivoted towards the governor's mansion. Now, Lefty, this is a bold play. I have frankly never seen anything like it. But the real story is what happened next. That's right, Art, because Swanson's announcement set off a DFL-wide maneuver that we're calling the Minnesota Shuffle. Okay, so we've got Swanson playing AG, and she breaks left of center and goes for the governorship. This leaves an opening for current Congressman Keith Ellison to take the field and announce his run for the AG title. Now, we all know Ellison's district is blue as they come, which meant a scramble amongst local DFLers to position themselves for the seat, including Rookie of the Year, Ilhan Omar! Time Magazine! Now, you almost never see a shakeup like this. My fantasy bracket is absolutely ruined. But that's why we keep coming back, Lefty. Love of the game. That's right, Art, but we won't know what happens next until we go to the polls August 14th. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Heck, with early voting, you can even vote now. Everybody has to vote. Coming up after the break, we're going to a real nail-biter at a Hopkins school board meeting. And our best guess as to who's going to take home the Minneapolis City Council MVP this year. You know it's going to be close. Until next time, this, this is Vote Center. Center. You gonna vote this year? No, I'm actually a Canadian. Oh, I'm a convicted felon, huh? Oh, yeah.